It's always about the arena, isn't it? You know, you know what? Yeah, the team's relocating. Let's talk about it right now. Your Locked On Coyotes, your daily podcast on the Arizona Coyotes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to everybody. This is Locked On Coyotes, number one daily podcast on the Arizona Coyotes. I'm your host, Robin Leonio, alongside a uh, visibly just done with it, Matthew Jacobson. Uh, this is Locked On Coyotes. What do you think of making this show your first listen every day? We're free and available everywhere you get your podcast. We're talking arena stuff again today because the report for there was there was a thing that came out over the weekend that. Quickly got debunked, but now other media people were starting to pick up again this week and starting to create their own uh, theories. Uh, and I feel like we just, and because we didn't address it the first time around, Matthew, we got to address it now because I'm sick and tired of this. Robin won't let me go to sleep tonight. I, I, I want to go to bed and she won't let me just so we can talk about this stupidity and Honestly, I I am just kind of really sick of it because it, it's blatant stupidity. I, I, I already ranted about it on my own channel. My retirement lasted two days, Robin, before I had something I needed to just complain about. And I'm not allowed to say the F words on this show. So, you know, I put it over there. Uh, how do we even begin? How? So I guess we'll start for, with, with the expansion process. Um, after a, a very serious story broke within like 15 minutes, um, Ryan Smith and his group put out, Hey, we want to, you want to do the expansion process. And Gary Bettman starts flirting back and he's like, Oh, you know, I can't wait to have these conversations, yada, yada. And, and because there was a line in like the second paragraph and, and the, the, we have an arena that, you know, we could host a, a, it could be the Immediate temporary home of a hockey team as as soon as next season. And it's like, that means relocation, right? Relocation? It's it. it that, coyotes relocation. What does this mean for the Coyotes? Because it's always about the Coyotes, Robin. It is always about the Coyotes. It is never not about the Coyotes. People keep saying, oh, nobody wants to hear about the Coyotes. Yet Utah wants to expand. They want to expand. Relocation. Coyotes. Relocation. They're trying to put they're, they're trying to put so much together as like temporary homes or immediate homes and everything like that. Utah in general is just trying to do that. Like they're just trying to pull these strings for everybody. They're the same team that's right now trying to pick up the A's for a temporary venue. Like so, like it shouldn't be that much news, anyways, in the first place. You know what? Like, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to cut you off for like thirty seconds just so I can pitch this idea. It is literally. More likely, and this is just basic logic. I love that you brought up the A's because you set me up perfectly, Robin. It is more logical that the, the board of governors are like, hey, play in Salt Lake for the next three years while your building's being built, and then you go back to Arizona. That is literally more likely right now, this current second, this current moment, that is more likely than the Coyotes relocation. And like, like it's just it's it's so stupid. And yet I, I have to sit here and talk about this. I had to talk about lunacy. Then we get Elliot Freeman on, on, on PHNX. That we're gonna talk about that in more details in the second segment. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and just set us oh, up no. a little bit. Elliot Freeman as well as other reporters. I call us some of those reporters oh, out. Um it's a lot. Probably. It is a lot. I mean the <laughs> What logical sense does it make that the NHL Board of Governors don't want to leave Arizona? It's it, it, very consistent. They want this market. Oh, well, even if they relocate, I imagine that Arizona, you know, they wouldn't be done. Oh, okay. N num n nope, nope. I'm, I'm, I'm going to cut myself off. Got to be professional. Hey, um, um, in, in, interesting individual, okay? If they are willing to, to, to allegedly force a sale to an NBA owner, why – the ever loving flipping heckity heck, would it not be to the owner that is already in the valley 
that already confirmed interest. I will say this. I was going to save this for a little bit later, Matthew, but I'll say this now because we're on the topic about it. Um, I've got a trustworthy source out there who, whose word, again, like I said, I, 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 I trust for so much. They pretty much said that, we, first of all, relocation, not even on the cards. This Salt Lake thing is a load of bull. Uh, the Salt Lake rumors that are spitting, like, oh, yeah, of course, the expansion, yeah, like, sure, they can expand if they want. But yeah. the relocation bit for the Coyotes, that's all bull. Um, there is frustration on the Morello front. And I think reasonably we understand that. That's the, some of the things I'm uh, some of the things I'm understanding from the inside, um, and they, and and it goes to the idea that if it if it goes gets to the point where they cannot complete an actual deal, which to my understanding they're trying to see at least get into the next stages, at least the cl close to the final stages by the, by the end of this week or next week, and. Again, if as long as they can finalize by Q1, still I think that's predicted. But if it doesn't by the, by this, at least they start the initiation of looking for a new for a new owner locally. Locally, they're not going to leave Arizona. Relocation is not on the cards whatsoever. We have to get that out there. You know what's funny? I covered it on my separate channel. Uh, cause, cause Robin didn't have enough of, of her own sources for any of this. So obviously this was my own personal speculation based on information I was told was that the board of governors was considering a quote, aggressive approach here. And even with that quote, aggressive approach by two different sources, I was told it would be a local buyer preferred local buyer to be the, the first option. That's why I put the tweet out today, Robin. Until Matt Ishbia confirms he is not buying the team or he has changed his mind, he has no interest. Until that, relocation is not on the cards because as long as you have someone who's got billions of dollars who is like, hey, yo, I'm interested in buying this in Phoenix, as long as you have that, this team is going nowhere, even with a forced sale. You're right. Absolutely. <laughs> it's I we're going to continue this obviously. We got a lot to we still got a lot to unpack about this all. I am only just getting started here. I'm pretty sure you are too. Uh we'll we'll do that though right after a quick word from our sponsors on today's show. And today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. I know we come to sports to escape uh, for some crazy realities of life, but can we just talk for a minute about preparing for real life? According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics. Like, uh, I cannot read that word. Uh, amoxicillin, right, in the middle of the worst flu season uh, in over a decade. That is scary. I can't imagine a more helpless feeling than... Uh, if if my wife, right, or or I don't have kids, but if I had kids, kids got sick while a supply chain issue kept them from getting life-saving medication that they needed. Thankfully, we'll be okay because of Jace Medical. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a, a long list of bacterial infections, including UTIs, respiratory infections, uh, skin infections, among others. This stuff can happen to any of us visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter it will be reviewed by a board certified physician and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost it's never been more important uh, to be prepared than today so go to jacemedical.com j-a-s-e medical.com and use offer code locked on to get twenty dollars off your order and this episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. 
Happy Super Bowl to all who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and placing some super bets, uh, specifically if they involve not betting in favor of the San Francisco 49ers. FanDuel is so many ways for you to end the season with a W or two or three. Not only can you bet on who will win the Super Bowl, who won Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets for which, which players will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. New customers join today. You'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. All right, welcome back to Locked On Coyotes. We're talking uh, the Coyotes Arena stuff. Salt Lake a reporter is reporting that relocation is imminent. When uh, we're, we've been saying this entire time, it's not even close. I, I, I want to cut in. It is possible. It's also possible a meteor could strike tomorrow. It's possible I can find dinosaur bones in my backyard. It's possible my dog can mutate into a dragon. All right. That doesn't mean it's going to happen or anything's imminent. I didn't even know about that wonder port that you're talking about until I was watching uh, Craig Morgan's show and he was like ranting about it. But like, th then you have all this like Elliot Friedman stuff. and like, oh, in my opinion, the Salt Lake thing. That's not a coincidence. Oh, that's them telling, you know, the that's them telling the, the, the coyotes that you have until this date, such and such a date, or else relocation. And th th then we get then we get an interview today, Robin. And did 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 you listen to I listened to I listened to part of it on the way home from work today, and I was just kind of like annoyed the entire time. Um because they're not related. Just because somebody wants to expand into the league does not mean relocation is imminent. As someone who, unfortunately, unfortunately, all right, I, I kind of hate my job sometimes because it's literally my job to have to talk to people to get tiny little bits of inside information that I could possibly scrounge and claw for just so I can look at stupid people and be like, you're an idiot. I'm not saying Elliot Friedman's an idiot. I just don't like the way he reported this. I don't like his opinion. I think he had a bad opinion. I am not saying Elliot Friedman's an idiot. I'm talking talking to you right there. I can see you watching. No. <laughs> no, you're right. No, there, there, there are reporters out there who are just they, – they either have a bad opinion or they are ill-informed of the situation, but they and they decide to put an opinion on nonetheless. Elliot Friedman has, is, uh, of course, is the one you mentioned. The report that got sent my way, though, mm -hmm. the report that got sent my way, um, Brody Brazil, coach of the San Jose Sharks. Oh, I love this dude, and I hate that I, video. Look, no, I, oh. I, look, I love Brody. I grew up on watching Brody. Like he was a sideline. He was like the sideline reporter for the Sharks on uh, Fox Sports uh, Bay Area at the time mm -hmm. uh, when I was growing up watching as, as a Sharks fan. Um, great. Like again, that was since since again. I think it was like. The late 2000s at this point to early 2010s. Um, so I was like, cool, you're, you know, you're there. And he just, but and he, I see this report and he's commenting, first of all, on what you mentioned, right? Where they, they looked at that second line is like, oh yeah, immediate availability for a hockey team now or whatever it was. And he's used that as an excuse, as like, oh yeah, that might mean the Coyotes could potentially move. Um, cause like, it's a, let's take a look at their history. Of course, they he talked about the failed Tempe, Tempe arena. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like, yeah, then he started looking for other places. Um, it's like, I know they were looking at Mesa, but I haven't heard about that. It's like, I think they should move to Scottsdale because, uh, because it's, I think it's better. It's definitely better than Phoenix and Glendale. And, and he, when he just, when he mentioned that, I'm like, dude, you are very well in uninformed. Like, yeah, sure. A lot is building up in Scottsdale and pretty, be pretty cool. But did you just not hear what we just reported about a little over a month ago at this point? Where Northeast Phoenix is the site on the border of Scottsdale. So it's not exactly Scottsdale, but it's right there. Um, and if you're looking anywhere that's close to that eastern side, 
I make and I'm looking at looking at you. Anyone else who might be listening, that's the SRP MIC. You stay away from that. That's the Indian reservation. They cannot build there. Um it's look. I again, Brody, I love you, but take a get get a little bit more facts. Take look at even some of the reports that got pointed out from the last month. Um, looks like you just weren't, weren't completely caught up. And I, th that's kind of what frustrated me. He does good stuff. I've been watching him for oh, no, he does, two years now. His, his reports on the A's, his, um, and the situation that they've been going through has been fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, he's been a really good job at covering the, um, the San Jose Sharks. And he, he just does a good job, you know, being a sports reporter in general. He's got a great show. Mm -hmm. Um, just this take, this little segment of a show that he did on his on his podcast oh it's just got me i'm just like bro this is not it i i, I know that one annoyed me more because he also made it like a premiere to get like more and more like like hype for the video i i i despise when people do that in general but also it's like that was just like it straight up comes across like it's four views and i know to an extent everything is i get it uh yeah. however when he throws in stuff like characterizing oh they wanted 200 million in public funds there would have been bonds issues the coyotes would have been responsible for paying back so when you characterize it as like they want public funds you're in, you're giving the implication that they wanted free public money when they were going to be issuing bonds and they would be forced to pay them back and and plus the taxes all the tiny like, things did like very, it was very vague on what the taxes was mm -hmm. kind of like based off the reporting it sounded like he was saying it was going to be city-wide, when in reality, it would have been only district contained. Like, there were a lot of things that, like, just throwing out buzzwords, essentially, to get people to listen. Um, and to just make it just completely out there. And anyone who is a hockey fan outside of Arizona, yeah, they're going to they're gonna watch that. And they're going to be like, oh, my God, what's going on? And us here in arizona we're like dude did you read our last report you know uh, let's take it back to the elliot friedman interviews yes. that, that actually set up a perfect transition even elliot said oh you know repeatedly oh you guys would know more about this than me oh you guys follow us all the time and like it makes me want to yell, and I know on this on this show I probably shouldn't. I I I can get a little excitable, but I probably shouldn't just start screaming. Uh, but my first thought is, okay, so if you're acknowledging you are not knowledgeable on this topic, why the hell are you not shooting Craig a, a text message calling him? You, you clearly have his contact info. Why are you not? Hey, I just want to make sure I'm getting this accurate. Hey, what's your like like? I uh, I, I I will give you an example right now when the Jacob Chickren rumors were coming out i have a, a, a contact that i trust that that covers ottawa first thing i did was shoot him a dm hey is there any is, is there any truth to this when i got an update i used him as, as an anonymous source and said per source there's nothing to report here like throw it throw it out there i tried like to whatever resources i had to get an accurate report out there i don't understand why someone like elliot friedman who for every one source I has probably has like 200 can't make a couple phone calls. Like, like I'll, I'll give you right now a small peek, but you know, inside baseball before I officially signed up for this show, Javier Gutierrez won't even email me back. We can't get in contact with a lot of people, even in this own organization yet people like Elliot Friedman can, he can get an official comment. He can talk to the commissioner. Why the absolute, why the hell? Why the hell are you not doing that? Why are you not taking advantage of the sources you have? Why are you not? Why are you not trying to be as accurate and meticulous as possible instead of just let's stoke the flames and then unfortunate jerkwads like our, uh, ourselves in this show have to deal with it because this is what we do, like daily, here, weekly. No, no, here's the thing, and I know we're coming 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 up on a break in a little bit, but mm -hmm. I think the major thing is anything that we're told is through unofficial channels. Mm -hmm. um, I mentioned what I did because I felt like it's important to you guys to know that what's really going on. Um, for the most part, though... Allegedly. Protect ourselves. Allegedly. <laughs> yeah, 
allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, uh, we like we try to do our best to make sure you sh- uh, everyone stays well informed uh, about the Arizona Coyotes. That is our job, um, and I think that's the thing is like if other if other reporters are getting the same information through outside channels, um, they could choose not to report that. Um, and only issues to report what's going on through the official channels and just stay in the quiet and mm-hmm. the quiet. It's, that's how things are get, get done here. And it's, I get it. I do get it. Cause again, you, have to, you do have to protect your source. Like, again, I'm even being vague. I, I, I even, uh, and try, try to be as vague as possible. Cause I don't want to. You know, you, you never you never give up your source unless your source says this is who I am. Like, put my name on. Yeah, it. put my name on. Put my name on the record. That unless you hear that, you don't. But you can still share bits and pieces of information. You just gotta make sure you are doing everything your like your power to your source. I just I'm just annoyed. Like Elliot Freeman again is entitled to his opinion. He can have whatever opinion he wants. He uh, he has more sources nationally than me. I'm even openly acknowledging that. All right, but it's like like I am allowed to think. He's either foolish or a jerkwad or whatever else for putting out these bad opinions that now people like us have to deal with. We have that to, is the, the frustrating. We have part. to fan the flames because so many fans, the the amount of DMs and the amount of mentions that I have received, it's like how is how much truth is there to this report? I have I have gotten that, and of course I've like and somehow even lumped in with some of the uh, mentions that Craig gets um, because I feel like. People are starting to trust me a little bit more because I've I've been working hard here to make sure you guys do what you, get 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 what you can. Um, and like I said, I did my reporting today. I reached out to my source to kind of get get some of the info, and that's where I said relocation is not on the cards. And then, of course, asterisk as of right now. Yeah, it's not it's if not things- being. If things you know. don't get done in the next few weeks, I think that like clearly that pressure will increase to sell the team. Mm-hmm. And if no local buyer shows up, if again and, we're gonna we're using Matt Ishbia as an example because he, it's, he I, spokesperson said it's my understanding that I feel like he would be he's he's call number one. Mm-hmm. And and you know what we'll, we'll talk about one other possibility after the break. We we need to take a break before before Sean has a has a meltdown. So. <laughs> We'll be right back. We'll be right, yeah, we'll be right back. <laughs> and today's episode is brought to you by Factor. New Year's, we got the first the first year of the new year passed. Uh, if you're on your if you are struggling to stay on your resolutions, let's let, let's fix that with Factor. Factor is ready to eat meal delivery. Uh, takes the stress out of meal planning. Set you up for success in the new year. Skip the grocery stores, prep work, and cooking fatigue. Instead, get chef crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door with over 35 meals to choose from per week, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. Plus, 55 weekly add ons. You'll have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions. Skip the overpriced takeout trap. Factor is cheaper than takeout. You can get, once again, those chef-crafted, restaurant-quality meals delivered right to your door, and they're ready to heat and eat in just two minutes. I know that's something for me. It's super helpful. I've been I've been eating out way too much. Factor is here to fix that all for me. Because, again, like we mentioned, it's much cheaper. Head to factormeals.com slash LockedOnNHL50 and use the code LockedOnNHL50 to get 50% off. That's code LockedOnNHL50 at, at Factormeals.com slash locked in NHL 50 to get 50% off. All right. Let's finish things off here. Um, you had something you said is another possibility. All right. So let me just uh, try to get a small, like, bit of information just kind of out. <laughs> so uh, the, the plan B's. I want I want some clarifications. I want to offer some clarifications and kind of things that I've tried to piece together. This is just me trying to piece stuff together. Um, as of the night of the election, Craig even reported it. The it should still be in that live stream 
uh, where a member of the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community said, so does that mean conversations are going to negotiations are going to start back up? That alone is enough confirmation that they were looking at other sites as well. That does not mean any of them were ready, like to sign a contract tomorrow. Like it was right. pretty obvious, even me getting to talk to a couple people that would know about this. The Coyotes were very much focused on Tempe, and I don't even need a source to tell you that, but I it did. It was the perfect location. Like, it was. Like, everyone knew that. Was. And so it's like they did put all their eggs in one basket. They were arrogant. They were cocky. 100%. Like, But they didn't put it. Yeah, they were cocky because it, it, they didn't end up putting too little money into it because they thought it was a shoe win. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when Craig reported that the talks between the, the Coyotes and the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community had stopped. Uh, he never specified where they were at. So just a logical brain, logical person. They cannot own anything they build on, re on reserve land at all. None of that would belong to them. Uh, more revenue splits. Uh, Morello couldn't have his sports book on site. There would be no residential. It is not ideal. Those the location's the great. Those are the biggest things he wants. I mean, he wants the shops. I think that's the biggest mm -hmm. thing he wants. The shops and the residential and the sports book. You take out two of, a th of the three things he wants, it's going to be a hard pill to swallow. And you're going to have to share more of the revenue because mm -hmm. the, 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 the tribes are going to get theirs. That's how that works. It's their land. Like it, it, It's a yeah. logical thing. And it, so, we knew that was an up. It, it was an option even going where we reported like a, a couple different uh, SRP MIC sites. Mm -hmm. So it's like, to our knowledge, that we have available to us. That was never fully off the table. It was just never ideal. So, let's use our thinking caps, children. All right, let's all all use our brains. Clearly, the Mesa site fell through because nothing has been reported about it since. North Phoenix became the focus. So clearly they're trying to secure North Phoenix. There's been some conflicting reports, even on this show, whether or not they're targeting public or private land. I was hearing more so private land. However, I it's still public. North Phoenix. So it's, it's so, some slight differences. So clearly North Phoenix is the focus. If that is not going to happen, I would probably put it like a 10% chance that the reserve land might still be on the table as a hail Mary. That's my personal speculation. I do not have a source on that. This is just me piecing together the logic. Then, if if that is one of the options for Morello to keep the team, that's a call that might happen. Probably doesn't end up happening, but the call might happen. Then, Matt Ishbia probably gets a call because at that point, there is no other Morello option here. There is no other Morello-owned option here unless he's willing to sell part of the team to Ishbia because no matter what Craig's been very consistent with this. And even though I have a couple of disagreements conceptually, not, not with the quality of his reporting that if Ishbia in no way, shape or form owns the team, they are not playing in footprint straight. The NHL does not want to be a tenant in an NBA building. It's been a yes. very consistent thing. 100%. And while I still stand by the NHL would probably let him play there as opposed to relocation. That's my opinion, not anyone telling me that. Yes. Uh, yeah, they'd, they'd probably stomach the bad sidelines for a bit. Mm -hmm. And while Ishbia probably looks at something that both of them, both the Suns actually will say, yeah, yeah, just, just, just for the sake of the major four, both the Suns and the, uh, and the Coyotes can play at. Um, whether it's a, a complete renovation or, I mean, let's put it this way. Um, we already know that um that the diamondbacks went out of chase field mm -hmm. what are you gonna do with that last spot of land why you could just build something new there like it's you could you you robin you could and matt ishbia billionaires like their toys it's an open secret put an and asterisk on this it's an open secret he probably wants a new building with what yes. he's done with the suns he can probably get whatever he wants you add saving the coyotes probably get whatever darn arena he wants whatever favorable deal because no matter what renovations happen to footprint it's still a 30 plus year old building he very likely wants his own i do like that as a i do like that as an option again obviously i think north phoenix um right now is a pretty good you know pretty good option for for the coyotes as a morello owned option yeah as a morello owned, as option. A morello -owned option great uh, great option is like probably what they like their their best bet at this point mm -hmm. um 
if it gets to the point you mentioned, and I kind of want to go back to what we talked about when we we're debunking the whole Salt Lake thing, but you mm-hmm. did mention the thing. The only possibility you can see the coyotes in the Salt Lake is them there in a temporary situation. So they don't have to be in a small venue like Mold Arena and get. But, but that still doesn't like make any no, logical no, it sense to me. No, it does. Matt Ishbia is right there. And like, just if you're going to force a sale to an NBA owner, Ishbia is right there. Yeah. Salt yeah. Lake, Ryan Smith is already willing to pay this expansion fee. So why would you risk a theoretical future Arizona ownership paying a, a billion dollars when you can get this very real Utah group to pay a billion? And then you also make a sale from Morello to Ishbia immediately. They can retrofit. It, it's going to require a bit of work, obviously. But there's also technology for like portable ice plants as well. You can literally make it work temporarily at Footprint while Ishbia is like, okay, I have two, well, three teams, but two major teams now. What arena are you going to help me build? <laughs> yeah, no, it. You're right, hundred percent. And if and well, I, this is just speculation. I, again, I want one more time. Asterisk. Again. Logical <laughs> speculation. No one is in my ear here. I apologize, Robin. I just wanted to. I had to cap that. No, I, that's that's really important to say because um, some people can again take it as you know take it as truth, and then although all of a sudden. Uh, uh, spam you on social media and be like, I thought you said this would happen. <laughs> That's why I throw a lot of allegedly's in my career. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, children in the audience, if you want to be a reporter, allegedly and reportedly are your best friends when you want to share information that you do not have double confirmed. That is it. That is it. When you're writing it, I've done this, man. I've done this a couple times. Mm-hmm. Um, where something comes out and it's a and it's just like a single report that says that mm-hmm. I will literally just put report colon news story. Yeah, report rumor like I did with my video. S- source says like keep it vague. Oh yeah, want to source. preface. Hey, this is coming from one person. It's kind of like same thing with like video game leaks. I'm, I, I like watching a lot of like videos and like oh hey this game's leaking. It's like you know per leak or like you know a source like. It's always you lead with here's your asterisk, take this information with a grain of salt, and then here is the, the topic and here's the information we're going to discuss. Absolutely. Let's we're, we're running out of time here, so let's wrap things up. Um, if you are the kind of listener, uh, if you're an everyday who goes through, uh, first of all, uh, this entire these entire episodes, we love you. You guys are great. Um, keep doing what you're doing, mad lad. You're the kind. <laughs> If you're the kind of listener, and I know there is a few of you out there, if you're the kind of listener that skips to the end to figure out what our main points were, um, <laughs> I'll give them to you right now. The main points. Mm-hmm. Relocation, not on tomorrow. the car. It's happening tomorrow. That's, <laughs> yeah, confirmed they are relocating tomorrow. You are 100% correct. And uh, Marty Walsh is actually the reason. Marty Walsh. <laughs> so, relocation. <laughs> Not on the cards. Salt Lake is getting uh, is looking to begin the expansion process, not a relocation process, um, and not even confirm that's even going to happen because that's it. Again, that's a long process. Mm-hmm. Three, the arena is is the arena process is looking like they're hoping to get at least uh, some steps done in the next in the next couple of weeks, maybe even by this weekend. Um, but the idea of, you know, of at the very least closing the deal by Q1. One last bullet point. Um, Javier, obviously the, 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 the fake deadlines you were giving us for the last like month were inaccurate and unrealistic. The, as frustrating as that was before you started putting fake deadlines out there, I was fine to be patient. Now that you're silent, that actually might genuinely be. The best thing you can do right now is not add fuel to the fire because there's a there's a barn fire going on out back. All right. And I don't need it turning into like 16 barns. Yeah. And again, I wouldn't be surprised until like we might hear like one advancement maybe in the next week or two. Um, But we won't hear anything concrete, I think, until March. That... 
makes me uneasy just because yeah. obviously that would be like that is late game that is very much you're running out of right. time to do something but, that's, but that's we're anxiety. talking concrete deal is done kind of situation a lot of this happens behind closed doors and, w and whatever tidbits we're getting they're tidbits <laughs> they are tidbits i will continue to again see if you know you know you know see what our sources like and i say our sources because you have yours i've got mine mm -hmm. to see what information we're able to learn i gave you what what i learned today or technically yesterday when everyone's listening from my source um and i think it's just a reason to be at least a little bit hopeful but this team isn't going anywhere the team's not the te this, this team is not relocating, literally, unless the fat lady's singing, all right? And sure, she, she might be doing some vocal exercises. She ain't singing. It's it's We're not at that point. It could happen. I'm not delusional. I acknowledge it could happen. We are nowhere near that point, and it's being terribly mischaracterized, and it's frustrating. However, I want to end on this, Robin. Um, Gary Bettman is speaking with the media, I think, on Friday. I am telling you right now, I don't really care what you're doing on, on Friday after those statements, we're making a bonus episode for Saturday because whatever they are good, bad or nothing. And if it's nothing, it'll be like a five minute segment and we're not doing anything big. If it's nothing, but good, right. bad, nothing neutral. You're getting something on Saturday. Oh, there, he will be asked the question. Mm -hmm. Therefore we will have something to say mm -hmm. because I, I, I get the feeling however he answers is going to tell me all I need to know because we are at the what the NHL and the Coyotes, it was a Coyotes thing to my understanding, wanted this to all be ready to go by the All-Star break. So it, like you were talking about and elaborating a little bit on, if that, hey, this realistically is going to happen is not at this point, then I, I'm telling you, like, that's what I'm like. Okay, so, like, you're going to call Ishby, right? Like, we're at that point. <laughs> you're right. Um, that's been that, – and that's basically what I heard, right? Basically what I heard. All-Star break is roughly, like, yeah, this weekend. This weekend, next weekend, around there. Um, I can't remember if I was even given an exact date. I had to take a look at back at back at the, uh, at the transcripts. Um, but it's happening soon. Like, at least a ne the next – at the very least – for next step. So we're over time though. We got to end this episode and we'll have more thoughts as this week progresses. I'm pretty sure you'll know. I have a lot of thoughts. I'll <laughs> constantly give you my thoughts. All right. I will. Cause I, I I'm angry, Robin. I'm mad. I, oh, I, 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 I can, I'm going to go to bed late tonight. <laughs> you can follow Matthew's thoughts, thoughts on X <laughs> at the AZ sports guy. You can follow mine at Robin underscore Leonio interact with us. Um, you know, ask us any question. Uh, also just be sure to subscribe to us anywhere you get your podcast. We're if those who are listening ad free, uh, on Amazon music. We love you guys too. Uh, you guys are a huge part of our, um, you know, of our, of our listener base as well. Keep doing what you're doing, but, uh, that's gonna be it for today's episode. Hope you guys are staying safe out there. Hope you guys are staying healthy and don't forget the howl on.